Hey everybody, it's Becky and Emma Pearson joining you today, Pivot Point of View. Um, we've kind of been quiet here lately because we have been on the go nonstop yes. uh, since... Since March. We've only had two weekends off and it is October 9th today. Um, so it has been a whirlwind of activity. Um, we started the spring off with, um, in March, well, we hosted a fill clinic in yeah. March and then we had, um, we had, well, we had the Patriot event. That was Patriot. first part of March. And then, and then we did the fill clinic and then we had, a, a cuttings. Cuttings. We had cuttings in town here in Broken Bow. Oh yes. And uh, then, we too. and then we had high school rodeo cuttings. Yes. And I think we did, I, of course, through there were jackpotting. We're still, you know, cause I, well, she, this is her, that is her only time to jackpot. And that's, mm -hmm. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and that's Gracie and I's time where you're kind of prepping, we're getting ready for the high school rodeos again. And so we are really lucky to have, we have, we were just talking today. We have some really nice jackpots to go to all throughout the winter that are in heated arenas. Um, and they're a really decent size. And so we can run almost every weekend throughout the winter as if it were the summer, pretty much. Yeah. But it's a time that we use for a, I get to actually compete. She gets to, and our, our high school rodeo horses recover. Yeah, and we can spend time on some young ones there, mm -hmm. or if there's some issues we need to work on or get one more solid in the poles or whatever, um, we try to pick some winter jackpots that have poles. And so we appreciate uh, producers like Deb Christie and McCook with the Triangle Cross Tooth series. Pick. And Toothpick <laughs> over in Albion. Um, like, they're literally, I think I looked for this coming winter, I think there's maybe a couple weekends in February that there's not a jackpot that we um could go to so mm -hmm. it is it's it's nice to have those options um when we're uh when we're needing to work on something or when i actually can get to go so um so yeah so we have been busy the spring um spring was a good run it was a good you know it's been a good run the entire time like you feel like you there you feel like you've had downs, but then when you look over it overall, it really has been good. Um, mm -hmm. So you went into state finals in June with, uh, you were sitting... I was sitting four... Are we talking about where, which event, just in all of them? Well, I was going to get to each one of those okay. events. So, <laughs> yeah. so where were you at in polls? I was, I think I was fourth in the polls. I think I was... I know I was third or fourth in the cutting. Actually, I might have been fifth in the cutting. I think I was fifth in the I cutting, mm -hmm. and I jumped up. And mm -hmm. then I think I was like, I was down there always in the barrels. But then I actually had a good state finals, and I jumped to fifteenth, which that, I know that's not top ten, but well, I really didn't have the greatest spring because I was jumping on different horses, and then finally. We get to the last few rodeos, and I got on just my darling Clementine, and <laughs> finished out solid. I think we just we just placed along at I think from Thedford we placed every weekend in the barrels, but of course that wasn't enough. Our top ten girls are always pretty salty, so. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and then we get to state finals, to and state finals. you had a great state finals for cutting. You had a horrible state finals for poles. Well, I did not have a horrible state okay. finals for poles. <laughs> I had a horrible <laughs> short go run. I but I I was leading the app actually I was leading the average going into the short go. Um, for poles. For poles, and I should have like this is gonna sound terrible. I rode so tight and I knew I was leading the average going into poles um and it had rained the night before and so it the ground had rained was slick. the night before and so it was slick and so that made me even tighter <laughs> and 
I tipped three freaking poles. <laughs> and I had not tipped three freaking poles all for as a total all spring. So there that gives you an idea. I did not tip three freaking poles all spring long in total. So and I hit that all in one run. And yeah. so that was a big heartbreaker because mm -hmm. I would have won the average, it would have jumped me to at least third, if yeah. not second. Um, so it was. I, it was tough. She yeah. did qualify for nationals in I cutting, but she was at the trailer crying because, because she didn't in polls. So. And just to give you some background, polls is my. I love polls, it's my favorite event. Um, because I'm a control freak and a perfectionist. <laughs> uh, it is my favorite event. And so, and then some background on that as well. My good pole horse was coming off of an injury. And so I was like, if I was like, it would be awesome if we could, you know, it would, she fractured her navicular um, the year. Not what, yeah, it would have been my junior year. What am I thinking? And so, um, the fall of your the junior fall of year. my junior year. I'm now a senior, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I was like, you know, we'd had a really good fall, and I was lucky enough to have her for most of the spring. I think there's some time in there, like some like she had a sore check ligament or something, mm -hmm. and um, so I think I ran her for like all but two runs in the spring, uh, and then I ran Clem. But yeah, she, I would have really liked to have qualified because she is a really neat mare, period. And so, True. when that, and she's, I would argue she's one of the most consistent horses when she's healthy. Um, in the high school rodeo, she did not tip poles. No. So, but you did make it on but Tucker. I did make Good it on Tucker. Good old Tucker. <laughs> So, um, yeah, Tucker is the old cutting horse that we've been, we've rehabbed and, um, old Tuck, he had an outstanding He did have, he won a round. Um, and, yeah. We were, what I found out later is we're actually only like a point and a half behind the state record when we won that round. Oh, wow. Um, hmm. we, what else? We got second and I think the next two rounds. If, if I remember right, he was solid, and I would like to think I helped that. <laughs> but, <Over. laughs> you know, Tucker, he was awesome. He's a good old boy. And so He's so solid. I, that horse is amazing. Yeah. Um, he does not move around good he around the place, but... Yeah. Um, he gets in the cutting pin, and he is like... The adrenaline like, kicks in, and... He's yeah. still, I don't think that horse has pain in the cutting pen because he is such a smooth mover. Yeah, and he just like he get, he's walking in there licking his lips, and uh -huh. he is he's just he he loves his so job. Happy. It's yeah. it's so amazing to watch him because he totally lights up his ears. Like some cutters, they have their ears pinned back, or mm -hmm. you know they look aggressive. But Tucker, <laughs> I it just sounds <laughs> so weird, but he looks happy. His ears mm -hmm. are pricked forward, and every time we go in and sort, he's licking his lips, yeah. which is pretty amazing to me because he's 18 years old, and he has had a lot of injuries throughout his career, and so... Yeah, he's, he's just, just good old Tuck. Yeah. So, so yes, yeah, so you qualified in the um, cutting. cutting, and then we had to leave right away after state finals to get to Perry, Georgia, because your little sister qualified for nationals and barrels for junior high. Mm -hmm. And um, so we were gone 10 days for that. And um, she made a solid run in the first round and then um, tipped, tipped to be in the... pretty close to making it to shore. Yeah, and so, so that was kind of a long drive home. Anybody living in Eastern 
United States, uh, God bless your hearts for driving in that traffic. I hate it. God bless your hearts for coming to <laughs> nationals out west because, oh my goodness, we thought we were going to die. <laughs> the traffic, uh, there was never a time when we didn't look in front of us for at least a mile. There was a bunch of traffic and a mile behind us. And, um, you know, bless my husband for driving. He drove the entire, well, I would usually pull it in the last hundred miles of every day. <laughs> and so, um, so it was just crazy. So we started, um, started up, we went to, um, middle of Missouri and we stayed with a very nice family the first night. And then we made it to Chattanooga, around Chattanooga, Tennessee, the second night. And then driving through Atlanta was absolutely crazy. Um, do not recommend that if, but there's really no good way around Atlanta. And so, um, we did have some friends that came into Perry, Georgia from the West. They dropped South before they got to Atlanta. So anyways, if you're going to go there next year, look at that, go through Alabama, I think is, um, but I, I don't know. I'm just glad we don't have to go back. But it was a beautiful it was a facility. Beautiful, yes, that is the best facility I think we've oh. ever been to. So the facility was built for the uh, Olympics when they were in Atlanta. 1996, I do remember that. 1996, and so um, it was it was amazing. That's where they held all of the equestrian events for um, for the Olympics and beautiful facility. There were like four ponds. If you get to go next year, take your fishing pole, take a kayak. Um, mm -hmm. Emma took her fishing pole, I her Barbie fishing fish. pole. She <laughs> caught a fish. Um, and, uh, it was, it was a lot of fun, very relaxing, lots of room. Um, of course we were in a great campground because of our, uh, nationals basket that each state does that uh, gets auctioned off and so last year our basket was like one of it was either the it top seller it. or the top second top seller this year we won it so nebraska will have a really good pick again next year for the campground and um so that was fun it was a great experience great um facility we get home from Georgia, we get two weekends off. I actually got to barrel race. One weekend. Like one weekend. And then I hurt my back a little bit. Um, but then I really hurt it when we went to high school nationals. And um, so I was cripping around like an old lady. I felt like I was 80 um, the day after I hurt my back at nationals. Cause, so I hurt it barrel racing. And then I heard it again, flipping our, we took a little pool. It was stupid, <laughs> stupid, stupid. So we took a pool so that we could like lounge in the pool at the campground. Um, Which shout out to Linder's, um, <laughs> Ryan and Selena Linder for bringing it to Georgia because that was much needed. Yes, it was, it was very really hot. hot. And, and it was hot in Gillette. And yeah. so they loaned it to us for Gillette. And so Gracie and I were draining it, and um, of course you don't get all the water out, and we were flipping it, and I hurt my back. And so, like it took me an hour to put my pants on the next morning, it was crazy. Um, well, at Nationals, Tucker and Emma had just solid runs. Mm -hmm. um, really, you know, nothing terrible, but it nothing super flashy. Yeah. yeah. So, um, it was a great experience for everybody, all of us. It was fun. A lot of it's fun. I mean, Georgia was really fun, but I don't think it was as fun for me. <laughs> the high school nationals was definitely more fun for me, but no, yeah. they were both fun for us mm -hmm. others. Um, for us others, <laughs> the support personnel, for the you support know. personnel, yeah. yeah. Um, and then so we got back, and we had to start right back to fall cuttings for your yeah, senior year. Yeah, we got back from what was it, the twenty second, or it was no. Yeah, the 22nd we got back, and the 29th, um, which was a Saturday, and the 29th was our first high school rodeo cutting of July for the next year. Yeah. So that gives you an idea of our turnaround time. It was just like, you know, it's just like another weekend. Yeah. Like, because in Nebraska, once we start, I'm just going to tell you, we don't stop. Um, like, in the fall, yes, obviously you stop, but... There's eight, there were eight weekends. I just counted them on the calendar over there. Um, we got back 
from nationals in um, Gillette, and then we went another eight weekends um, with rodeos for the fall. So we were really glad. Our first weekend off was September 24th, and we did not go anywhere. Yeah, we I just we stayed slept, home. I think I slept in yeah. until 10 o'clock. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that was... I went to bed at 8 o'clock the night before. <laughs> so, yeah, it was fast and furious. Um, this year we have two high schoolers. So uh, we're super pumped about that, that we- But we take two rigs. <laughs> <laughs> some, of, some of the rodeos that have um, cuttings at, we basically have to have seven horses at, um, at those rodeos. So we've had to take two trailers. Um, so that that's not that big a deal though, because it's like an hour drive. I mean- Yeah, to Lexington, it was fine. I think, oh, it's to Nelson. Nelson. That was another one. Couple hours. So. Couple hours. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to think if yeah. we'll have any in the spring. Yeah, but yeah. But it, it's really not too bad because a lot of the cuttings are off-site, and so mm -hmm. we get a lot of cuttings out of the way early. Yeah, so, and success. Um, so the fall, fall has been a little rough. Um, fall has been actually really good to me on the cutting. And barrels. And the barrels not in the polls, which is very uncommon. Uh, I'm not going to say very uncommon, but the polls has definitely been my strong suit in the last, I'm just going to say freshman through junior year. That was all, mm -hmm. that's what I felt was my strong suit. Um, and I rode a horse called Clementine and I rode twice and that, uh, twice is special. And so those were my two go-tos and Gracie took Clementine, which it was perfect because she needed one that was going to be competitive. And then I took, of course, took my good horse twice as special and twice got an abscess after the first or second weekend mm -hmm. um, after getting blood clots in her jaw. We think maybe she got kicked in the yeah. in the jaw. She's kind of the boss, um, um, but mm -hmm. yeah, so she boss of her pen boss of her pen and um so she got kicked in the jaw and then yeah had uh had an abscess um which we're still working through she's not you know it's the, blown but it's still tender she's still yeah so mm -hmm. we haven't put shoes on her yet because she's still pretty sensitive over that area so then you had to um run poles on, on big you did big for well, a couple. Well, I did big for Nelson, yeah. and I did Patron mostly. I did mostly Patron, but I did do big some. And big, I'm just going to say it was not good. <laughs> he's big. and Big, and I swear he's 21 foot long, which is the same <laughs> amount of space in between each pole, just for an example. And so it's just a lot to maneuver through each pole and through each weave. And so I did big because we were trying to keep runs off of my barrel horse Patron that I've started running this year. Um, because Patron is a bleeder and so we have to run him with Lasix, which can be a lot when you're doing two runs a day and you have to redose. Um, you do have to redose at a lot of rodeos. So, because poles is very first and barrels is very last. And so, we, I, that's why I ran big. But we knew Patron was the better pole horse, but we thought maybe I could make big work and. Well, the weekend you did him, that was a three day weekend. Yeah. It was Labor Day weekend. And so that was gonna be six runs. Yeah and six dosing of Lasix, so we don't want to do that to Patron. Yeah. He's too nice of a horse. And so I, and not that I haven't had success on Big in the Poles, but he's just greener. And so when we got to, to the rodeos, it was a lot because that was, that's trashy ground all that weekend, all weekend. And so for him to be fairly green in the poles and then run on not very good ground. It's, you know, we don't get exhibitions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so 
when I ha when I have done well on big in the past, I we've always had exhibitions mm -hmm. for polls, and I would say he's I don't know he's not been entered still very much, <laughs> yeah. um, but I did ride Patron. At the end, we. Uh, well, we didn't place actually, but we did tip to be really fast a lot of times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you were just kind of getting your, yes, you know, getting a feel for him in polls. Mm -hmm. um, so to give everybody a little bit of a recap uh, or uh, background, Patron, um, we knew Clem was out and not really going to be an option. Um, well, Clem got an abolition yeah. fracture. Uh, so that's why she's re now retired to the broodmare herd. Yeah. And if you want an idea, like it was like a fish hook, how bad the fracture was. So, yeah. yeah. And so we needed an, a barrel horse, um, another barrel horse. So a we, pole horse. and well, we did another pole horse. Okay. Oh, and, and barrel horse. Yeah. Yeah. One that could do both. One that and, could do both. um, so we bought, uh, the lady we bought Stevie from, Deanne Galson, um, she had Patron, and he is a super nice gelding, um, and uh, so we tried him out just ahead of Nationals, mm -hmm. and um, loved him. Yeah, Emma's like, oh, I've never rode a horse that was so easy he, in he's barrels. Literally, yeah. um, when we don't have a good run, it's because I get in his way. You just put your hand down and you kick. <laughs> yeah, and she's never had that. And I've just... <laughs> never had that. So, um, yeah. Yeah. He's so much, but like literally today we're 1D and pretty easily, and I just sat up there and kicked. Yeah. So, uh. <laughs> well, well, sorry, we just got down at a jackpot, so. Yeah. But, anyways. Yeah, and so he's really, he's nice. He's so mm -hmm. nice and finished, and not as finished in the polls, and you hadn't run him much in the polls. No. Um, and so a lot of it was just figuring out your We had to figure timing. each other out and he was so green enough in the polls that he needed help, but he was finished enough, you know, you still have to let him work and help him when he needs mm -hmm. it. So I think finally when we, when we got to Broken Bow, which is my favorite high school rodeo, um, I let my hair down and <laughs> I let my hair down and we tipped to be a 20.6 in the polls because I was, I'll just be honest, I was very frustrated because I hadn't placed since the first rodeo that I ran and that's where I ran twice, um, my good pole horse. And so that to give you an idea, we have eight weekends and Broken Bow is the second to last weekend and I am a little competitive. <laughs> and so, yeah, I would just went out there and I went hauling and it was, it was looking beautiful. Our first we we were good, like we hadn't tipped anything yet. And then our week back we did tip. So, and then the second day I think we tipped to be like, a fast 21 and so it got super fast on second day fast. like we had like five 20 five second pull runs that which is amazing, is amazing. For, yeah. yeah like and everyone wants to compare to texas and oklahoma but mm -hmm. i would put a lot of girls our nebraska girls against them mm -hmm. when we get on good ground it's pretty mm -hmm. fun too yeah yeah so yeah i think like a 20.8 was like fifth place yeah <laughs> Oh, congratulations! You, you ran twenty point eight. You have fifth place. Yeah. So it was it was crazy fast that day, which was cool. Um, so, but yeah. So, but barrels went really barrels well this fall. Well. You are um, in. The I'm in the top, top ten and in barrels right now. Yeah, I think you're number nine. I right think now. I'm nine, mm -hmm. and you know, like seventh, eighth, and ninth, I think are all within three points. Mm -hmm. And then um, the top four are, of course pretty kick butt pretty salty and but we talked you know we feel if I have a good spring I still have a shot at nationals um in the barrels which in the spring we are big deep sandy pens which is actually Patron's setup mm -hmm. um he is a big gelding and he is but he is, just drags his butt in the sand and he gets low 
Mm -hmm. He kind of is like a four wheel drive mm -hmm. type horse. He really just gets low and just keeps yeah. going with all four legs yeah. at once. So it's it's really pretty pretty neat to watch. Yeah, um, and but you know a lot of horses will get bogged down, and so that's mm -hmm. I think that's why we kind of thought the spring will be. And of course I'll have had him longer. Mm -hmm. I only had I think two runs before we started the high school rodeo yeah. stuff. So let's talk about let's talk about the three things that Phil talks about: feel, no, timing, timing, and, and balance. balance. So I had no feel or timing with the horse when I went into <laughs> high school rodeos. Yeah, but but you you didn't have a feel for him, and he didn't have a feel, feel for, for you, mm -hmm. and your timing on things. Um, especially in poles, if your timing mm -hmm. isn't right, you know, then it is a disaster. And then your balance, the really interesting thing. So this is, um, this has been something you've had to really work yes. on. Like at first it was easy cause you were just like, okay, I don't know. I don't know this horse. I'm just going to sit, stay, out of, stay out of his way. And so things were really good. And then you kind of thought through a dice spell, an um, adjustment period, mm -hmm, an adjustment period. And one of the differences that um, Emma has been taught from riding twice that to kind of put your weight in your outside stirrup, which then frees up that inside front leg on those horses and it makes it easier for them to finish that turn. But Patron was not taught that no, way. Patron, you just stay in the middle. Stay in the and middle or even even uh, lean a little to the inside mm -hmm. is what Deanne had said. and so. When Emma started leaning to the in the outside stirrup, he was a little bit like, "What are you doing?" Yeah. And he would actually kind of pop out of it. His hind end would pop out of his turn a little bit. And so, um, what was so awesome was that every time we made you made a run, we would send those videos to Deanne, mm -hmm. and Deanne was wonderful to work with. Mm -hmm. In that she actually took them and really studied them, and she's like, you know, I think Emma being in that outside stirrup is actually causing him to do that. And so mm -hmm. when you focused on just staying centered up, it fixed that problem. Mm -hmm. It was it was great. So and it was actually right mm -hmm. before Broken Bow, and Broken Bow went really well. Yeah, in the barrels. You in placed barrels, both, days. both days. Yep. You ended up getting all around for one day. Okay. And second overall yep. by a point. Yeah. <laughs> we gave away a saddle and mm -hmm. Emma missed it by a point. So, so yeah. yeah. It was crazy. But um, it was good to figure that out. Mm -hmm. And so working on that feel, that timing, that balance. I've been thinking about that a lot over mm -hmm. the last... I don't know, week. Uh, so last week we went to Oklahoma and we... Um, it was actually this week. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Time <laughs> just goes. But so we were down there with... Um, we took a colt down to Phil Haugen and um, talking to him about it. And, and he was talking about his wife, Bridget, and just needing to get more runs to get that timing down. And that's exactly where I'm at with my horse's horse. Um because Gracie took uh, Rabbit, the five-year-old. And um, so I have big and, you know, I got to run in July. <laughs> <laughs> hey, run. Hey, run in July. Um, I, well, maybe I got to run, too. I got to run once in Gothenburg, too. At a oh, because I, yeah. I got to run. That was my second run on Patron. Yeah. And I got to run at Gothenburg yeah. as well, so I bet yeah. you did. So yeah. I got two runs this summer. <laughs> two whopping <laughs> runs. And... Um, and so, you know, when you don't compete um, on a regular basis and everything that I do with big is just slow and correct mm -hmm. and slow <laughs> and slow. And so it was so hard for me to get out of that slow motion. And so it's always a big joke that, um, you know, I have my granny panties on and just <laughs> technically correct, but just super slow and um pretty very pretty <laughs> but you know you don't get judged you the the clock is your judge so um so i've been working on trying to improve my timing with speed mm -hmm. and so this weekend we went to the jackpot and um big and i had our personal best in this arena um together um uh, so he and i were the fastest he and i have been um on friday night so that was really fun 
and um but we we tipped on saturday and we tipped today we tipped second barrel saturday we tipped third barrel um today and uh and it's just that again that feel he's super feely so he is really feeling when i'm sitting for my turn and he is responding he's coming back to me he's he is doing exactly what I am asking him to do. And um, it's getting really fun. So now I just have to work on changing my my focus. You know, it used to be where I was like sitting down halfway to the barrel and burying my butt to make sure that I was ready because he was not as ready he, as he is now. He is, he's really, he feels so good right now. So anyways, that's a little recap from from the weekend and I um, I just ran today and his patron and Emma his patron like, <laughs> one <laughs> you know you know it's just what we do <laughs> uh, he was good he was yeah. solid yeah he was and rabbit this weekend Gracie A big progress actually she took yeah. today and I know she was super mad but um she was what was she was she 2D yesterday? Yeah. She, yeah, was, she 2D, was 2D yesterday. Which for mm -hmm. Rabbit was, he was very bottom with a 40. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> that's a yeah. big jump. <laughs> yeah. Gracie can find gears in a horse that the rest of us can't. And mm -hmm. um, she got him woke up and man, he looked really good yesterday. Yes, he did. And um, now again, it's kind of that field timing and balance. And so yesterday they went out and they made a great run. And then today she just, you know, sent him in there again. And he being a green five-year-old, um, you know, he wanted to be a little stiffer with that speed. So you add speed and things, you know, the wheels kind of fall off a little bit and they did, they did fall they off did today. Fall today. So she'll go back to the practice pen and, and work on getting, getting him softened up. And, yeah. Uh, yesterday's run, I think, showed a lot of promise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of promise. So. That was good. So we're going to take the fall, rest of the fall and winter and, um, we'll I'm get not going to say off, but no, but it's going to be regroup mm -hmm. and work on the things that we need to work on. I will, I will get to go. Yay. She will get to go. She gets to go <laughs> October through March, February, March. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. everyone else's downtime is her time to run. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But like yeah. we said, we have really good jackpots to go to throughout the winter, mm -hmm. so yeah. maybe she'll even run poles. I don't know. <laughs> she hates poles. I I am not as big a pole, pole fan as I am barrels, but it's it's different when you have a really good pole horse. They are fun, but they are a little freaky. Like, <laughs> whipping past your head, like, yeah. So, but well, we'll I think, see. I do think poles are for perfectionists. People who love poles and love to do them on lots of different horses definitely have a perfectionist trait to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably. Say. Okay. Because you have to be borderline control freak. But our motto but. is strive for progress, not perfection. Perfe perfection, yes. Yeah, yeah that is. I, I actually, uh, I have it on a sign on the wall here in my clinic. That's where we're doing the podcast today is in the clinic. Strive for progress, not for perfection. Um, yeah, because if you keep striving for progress, you'll see little, little glimmers of perfection. <laughs> so. All right, thanks for joining us. Bye.